So a couple weeks ago, Sony announced something that I was really looking forward to, um, and it's not all that I was hoping it would be. So PlayStation obviously has a PS5. They just had the PSVR 2 come out, um, but they're adding an additional thing to that suite of next-gen gaming, and they're coming out with something called Project Q. That's what it's called right now. I'm sure it'll have a different name once it fully is released, but um, as of right now, we've just got like a little intro video to show you what the thing looks like, and we don't know much more. I mean, I've got some details I'm going to share with you today, but I honestly don't know who the fuck they are making this Project Q thing for. So if you haven't heard about it, Project Q is basically a fake Nintendo Switch. Um, it looks like a Switch, except for on either side it's got half of a DualSense controller. So basically it's the PS5 controller with a gigantic 1080p screen in the middle. And uh, you know, that sounds amazing. That like literally sounds like my dream mobile console. Except for the fact it's not a console. It's a fucking streaming device that requires Wi-Fi. And as of right now, you have to have a PS5 to use it. That's what they're saying. They're, they're not even going to allow cloud streaming. It's only going to be remote play. If you know what that is on PlayStation, your play, PS5 is going to be at home or wherever it's plugged in, and it's going to be in rest mode. And you can activate remote play just like you can on your phone, which is what I currently am able to do with a PlayStation Backbone, which is a knockoff PS5 controller, but works pretty good. Um, but this Project Q, it looks like the best way to do remote play, for sure. The only thing is, it's so nice that it might cost too much that no one even buys it because it's more of a, a niche product that like you're not gonna use all the time. Like if I could get a PS5 that was like a Switch to where I could actually download the games, play them without having an internet connection, on the go, and uh, have all of my PS5 features in this little console, maybe it reduced resolution and you know lower frame rates, that's fine. 1080p 60, that's fine with me, I don't give a fuck. But the fact that we can only stream on this thing is just like, it's flabbergasting. I don't understand it. Like what are they thinking here? Because there's already products on the market that do this. You could do this with uh, a Steam Deck. You can do this with an Android or an iPhone, an iPad, a tablet of any kind, like computer. You could do this with all sorts of different things already. They're just coming out with a PlayStation official version. Now the one major benefit to this thing, outside of it just being really cool looking, is the fact that it's going to actually have the DualSense features. So like adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback, it's still going to be there. Whereas now when I do remote play on PS5 game, no matter what controller I'm using, um, it, there's no vibrations. But if you have this thing, it's going to work. Um, and that, to me, is weird. Because you can use a PS5 DualSense with remote play, say, on an iPhone, but it doesn't it doesn't work. It, like, it just feels like regular, like, faint vibrations. There's no adaptive triggers. So they are holding that feature out just for this Project Q thing. And uh, I understand. That's not, that's not going to get me to buy it, though. Uh, there's, they're going to have to really add something more to this to get me to buy it. If they... But they're not going to say that it's a console you can download games. They're not going to do that, I don't think. It's not going to have internal memory or anything like that. At least not a lot. It's going to have enough to run, obviously, but not enough to download huge games. Um, and it's not going to have its own games like the Vita or the PSP. It's, it's basically just a peripheral for the PS5. An expensive one, most likely. Um, now, there's no official price yet, but Microsoft has leaked. I don't know how Microsoft got this information, but Microsoft has leaked that PlayStation is coming out with a mobile console slash controller that's going to be under $300. That's all they said is under $300. Um, that could just be a bullshit rumor. But by the looks of this thing, a DualSense already is like $70. And when you tack on a screen on top of that and whatever internals it has, I'm guessing it's going to be minimum $200 and most likely closer to 300 and that's just painful to look at from a PlayStation like lovers perspective like me I love my PS5 so much I haven't even bought the PSVR 2 one because I'm not sure I really need VR but two is because it's so expensive I mean the console already 
cost me like five or six hundred dollars. I don't remember how much I paid for. I think it was five hundred dollars because I got the disc version. And uh, there's rumors of them coming out with a PS5 Slim sometime later this year. I mean, they haven't even announced that yet, so I don't know if that's true. But there's so much that they're just keep releasing. I'm cool with just a PS5 and playing at home. I mean, I don't really travel that much right now. I don't have a need for a mobile console. It would be cool to have, say, if I wanted to play it in the car or play it in bed or something. Um, but you know, I, I don't travel that much, so I don't really need it. So I'm not buying the Project Q, but I, I want to feel what it's like. I really do. I hope somebody I know gets it, so I can check it out, um, or just watch reviews and stuff once it comes out. Um, but I, I think they really, really missed the mark with this thing. Like, they should have just went all out and competed with the Switch instead of competed with smartphones. Like, you're not going to get anybody away from their phone. They're already addicted to it. They're already used to it. If they're playing on their phone, it's because they don't have a fucking PS5 to play on, most likely. Or, I don't know, they're just not home or something. Excuse me, but it's hot as fuck out here. It's already 80 degrees and it's only 11 a.m. I just got out of the gym. I'm just sweaty. Feeling nasty, but... Water makes everything better. Speaking of that, I'm about to go to the pool after this, too. Which, that would be another cool place. If I had a mobile PS5, I could play it in a, when I'm not swimming. I'm just chilling on the side of the pool. But, no, you won't be able to do that because you'll require a Wi-Fi connection. The pool I go to doesn't have Wi-Fi. It's so already fucking useless there. It just doesn't make sense. If anyone can help me figure out like who they're making this for it, I think it might just be for people that have way too much money and just waste it on anything like it's for people who don't need it but just get it because they can that's what it seems like to me um, now if this thing comes out and it's under $200 somehow highly doubtful but if that happens um, that will be tempting to replace my backbone with that um, so one other benefit over the backbone which if you haven't seen my PlayStation backbone videos just search me up on YouTube or on peaked and just filter the search on peak to post by Daltano only and just type in uh, PlayStation backbone or even just backbone it'll come up well I've got two posts on I did a video review once I got it and I did like uh, just a video talking about it before I got it really good videos love that product I don't use it that much though and one thing that's really annoying is that your phone the battery on it will drain and like it takes up anything else you're doing on your phone like you are locked in on your phone and it's annoying whereas with the Project Q you're going to be able to play it on that little not console but whatever the fuck this peripheral is going to be this controller type screen thing you can play on that and then have your phone in your other hand and it's not even it's not even doing anything so I don't know I really don't know how this thing's going to turn out. I hope that they announce more features. It's just going to be important. They haven't even said what type of operating system it's going to have. Some people have said, if it's got Android, you can hack it and you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. But I have a feeling they've already thought of that and they're just going to have some custom Linux-based operating system that's like just hard to break into and just not user-friendly. I mean, it'll probably be nice and work for what it is, but it'll probably be simple and just not able to be customized that much. I'm being negative, but like that's just most likely what's gonna happen. Um, I don't know. I had to talk about it though because I'm just like confused why this product is going to exist. I think it's coming out, I forget what they said, maybe early 2024, maybe before then, might be the end of 2023. But like I said, there's only like a minute long video where they show off Project Q, the new wireless earbuds that are coming out for PS5. And uh, it's short, but like you can see what this thing looks like. It's also in the thumbnail here. That's the actual Project Q that they've shown off. Um, it looks cool. Screen's bigger than a, a stock, or not stock, but like a launch switch. I don't know if it's bigger than an OLED. I haven't done the, I haven't checked, but it's at least the size of an OLED, maybe bigger. But those big DualSense controllers are going to be so much com more comfortable than a uh, Nintendo Switch. Because with a Switch, I always have to put that in a grip to give me like handles that come down on the side otherwise my hands cramp up playing it but the dual sense is just the most comfortable controller ever i love it so much it is one of my favorite parts of a ps5 and i think playing games that have dual sense support on ps5 just make the game better than any other console or pc whatever you're playing on 
PS5 has got the best experience. When you're playing a game like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Control Ultimate Edition, any of these games that you're shooting guns, it's so much better on PS5. And the fact that you're going to have that in a mobile option now is pretty cool, but it just doesn't seem necessary unless they took it to that next level of making it an actual console instead of a streaming device. All right, I've blabbered enough about this damn Project Q. Drop comments below. Tell me if you have any opinion on this thing, if you have any desire to get it. I know there'll be some people that just have buku money that buy this thing, maybe use it once or twice and let it collect dust. Um, I'm not in that position right now. I would much rather work towards getting a PSVR 2 than buying a controller that I'll barely, barely use, but um, we'll see. It might be good. Last time I did remote play, this it worked. I mean, it just wasn't as smooth as playing on a console. That's why I don't love that. So even when you do have Wi-Fi, really good Wi-Fi, it's not as good of an experience as on the console itself. But it's definitely feasible, especially with certain games. It's easier, but like if you're playing an online shooter, it's pretty hard. Um, but if you're just playing, I don't know, like a single player open world game, it's it's usable. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you watching. Another video coming soon. Peace.